everybody. I feel like Hi, that took um, so long. It was just like <laughs> going for so long. Okay. Um, hello. Welcome to, oh my gosh, the very first live show of 2023 for the Literally Dead Book Club. That seems mm -hmm. so weird because it's already March. Mm -hmm. um, if you're brand new, this is a 10 month a year book club. Uh, this is probably the most outside of the norm that we've ever done because it is like a cozier, lighter mystery or thriller. And it's also part of the series. So just thank you to anybody who like committed to the series and came here. Uh, I know some of you probably read it just to participate, which is really cool. Um, here's my emojis. Give me a heart. It doesn't have to be green, but if you read all three, um, give me any like red emoji in the comments. If you only read the third one, which you might think sounds crazy. I just went and checked the Goodreads. There are so many people who only read the third book and I am flabbergasted by it. <laughs> yeah. um, and then give me a thumbs up if you're just here to hang out. So we're going to have everybody introduce themselves. I would love to hear just like your channel. Um, tell me like what you rated the first two books so we can kind of catch up on that. And then if you have any recent favorite mystery thriller or horror books, I would love to hear that in your intro just so people can get a gist of, you know, your reading taste. Let's begin. Um, yeah, hi, my name is uh, Gabby. My channel is Gabby Reads. Um, I read a lot of, you know, thriller, horror, and romance is like my top three mainly these days. Um, and the, okay, so the first Finley Donovan was like a five star. It made it into like my top three of the year, like God tier obsessed, <laughs> loved it. And then the second Finley Donovan, I think I gave it like four stars. Um, and then as far as like a recent favorite goes, um, I just read this book called Any Man by Amber Tamblyn. And it's probably my favorite book that I've read so far this year. I don't really know um, genre wise what I would consider it. I think it lands somewhere in the horror genre, um, but it was very powerful and it's just stayed on my mind for a very long time. And I highly recommend. So, yeah. Cool. So my name is Mayana from, oh my gosh, I don't even remember my <laughs> Maya Core or Mayana Reads. Um, I rated the first book five stars. It was also in my top of the year. The second one, unfortunately, I ended up giving two stars. And then this one I gave like three stars. And then the most recent like mystery thriller I read was While Justice Sleeps. It's a political thriller, like think how to get away with murder, written by a black author. It was actually like really amazing. And I read it in January. So it's one of my favorite reads so far this year, actually. Oh, sounds so good. Is that one by Stacy Abram? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Katie Wilson um, from the not creative username, Katie Coulson. Um, I mainly read horror thrillers. I gave the first book five stars the first time I read it, four stars the second time I read it, and I gave the second book two stars. And I haven't read any horror, mystery, or thriller this year that I've given five stars, except for manga. Uh, but I'm not going to recommend Killing Stalking because I'm not going <laughs> to ruin anyone's life. Um, but I, I did the last five star I gave. This is not mystery thriller, but How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia and Nagamatsu, which is a dystopian, and it is horrifying, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. I think it's worth the read, personally. Nice. Uh, I'm... Gavin from the Not Creative channel name, How to Create Gavin. Uh, I, I've i been on it such a nostalgia kick. I don't just read anything, but like I have been reading a lot of nostalgia books. But for the Finney Donovan series, I mean, firstly, how disgusting is this? Is <laughs> oh my God. Why? Why is it so long? I have no idea. It doesn't Which need to be. It's not normal. Like is it that the third one's really tall or the other two are weird? I, I think it's because the third one's really tall. These ones, seem, well, seemed fine to me, but then that one came and I was like, instant one star. I mean, I didn't actually, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't give it one star. I didn't, but like, so the first book I gave five stars, loved it. Second book, I gave three and a half. I was like, mm, it, mm, yeah. And then this one, I gave two stars. And yeah, I just, yeah, I will talk about it. But the most recent thing that I read that was like kind of horror related, which you guys will think I'm trolling you, but I'm not really, but it's Gossip Girl Psycho Killer. It's like, it's so, it's one of those things where if you watch like a really bad film, like it's so bad, it's good. Like this is like what the, this book is. It's very camp. It's Blair and Serena. They turn into serial killers. They try and kill each other. And like, literally, this is so gory. They kill, I think the kill count is like 20. They've, they kill like 20 people in this. And it's just so bad, it's so good. 
I would genuinely recommend just for a fun time. Wow. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know some of us got into our ratings already for the third book. Um, I've had to skip around some of your videos because I didn't want to know before the live show what your ratings were. <laughs> um, but now I now I have a, a little sense. Um, I think before we get into spoilers, I just want to, I like to hear kind of a quick summary of why you gave it the rating you gave um, in case anybody's here trying to decide if they should get into the series or read the third book. Um, so I'd love to hear your rating, each of you now. Um, and like, just why? I said sum it up in three words, just because that's easy. But if you have more words than that, it's fine. Um, OK, yeah, so I ended up giving this one three stars. Um, it's definitely like my least favorite in the series so far. But I, I don't think I disliked it as much as some others did. But I, I don't know. It would just, for me, it just didn't really feel like it had the same um, like addictive writing as the first two books did for me. Um, or at least like when I set this one aside, I was not that excited to pick it back up again. <laughs> So it just didn't really have that same kind of fun magic that I, I guess I was used to with the first two, but mm -hmm. it was all right. Yeah, okay. I also gave it three stars. And I agree with Gabby, but also it's it feels like the more I read on, the more like unrealistic it is. And like, obviously the first one was unrealistic, but it was also like that could maybe possibly happen. Whereas yeah. like the more we go on, the more I'm just like, okay, this is not realistic. And I have to like keep that in mind. But I'm also like, I don't know. I kind of just wanted more, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gave, I gave it two stars. There were definitely things where I like actively was like ranting, like angry. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a couple things I liked, but I'd say when I thought like three words, um, Finley's unbuttered toast. Why yes. are all men obsessed with her? That's yes, I I agree. Mm -hmm. And I also felt like when I was reading it, like y'all have kind of already said, but I felt like El Casameno was just trying to keep writing these books forever and we're never actually going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I think that's why I gave it two stars too, because I literally, I like my honest said as well, I love the fact that the first one was quite absurd, but when it gets into a territory where it gets beyond the absurd in this absurd world it just like it goes from like jumping the gun to jumping the shock you know what i mean it's like <laughs> it gets far too ridiculous the times that i just couldn't like, I, I just couldn't picture it anymore one thing i loved about the first one is the relatability and like the realism within the absurdity and now it's just absurd like i can't see this actually happening and that, that i mean i know i read a lot of crap but it's just it's not supposed to be this way this is book three you know it's, oh the first one just it was so good. Mm -hmm. I do feel like this is pretty much the everybody here and everybody in the chat. Like this is the opinion that this is it's the least favorite. I did see a couple people who gave the second book like a one or two star. Um, so I understand that. So this one might seem a little bit better. But for me, I gave the first one five stars. Like most of the people here, the reason that I read it because it got such rave ratings and I thought it was so fun and silly and stupid. Um, and then the second one I gave a four because I was still having a good time, but it just didn't have the same like oomph that the first one did. And this one I'm giving a three. So it just kind of goes down every time. Um, why I at one point called Finley Donovan is killing it like fun and fresh because it was not like anything I've ever read before. So my three words were fun, not fresh. <laughs> I'm still having a good time. But like it's done, like we've done the same plot for three books now, like not enough is getting resolved for me that I will read the fourth, but I don't think I would continue if she continues to write them. Because I feel like the four books will have like, it'll, it'll, I think some things will wrap up. I have to believe that. Yeah. Well, I have a, I have a question. How many, is there only supposed to be four books is she that she's is, contracted for? She's on contract for four. Yeah. And has anybody here read the first book? reread it no because when i reread it i gave it four stars because of the absurdity for the first time but i think it's a book you can't reread because it's absurd and the first time you're like oh my god and then the second time you're like what the fuck i it's funny because in the video where i read the second book i said in it if i don't reread this before the third i'm gonna forget absolutely everything and that is what happened. I started reading this. I was like, who are any of these people? Like, what is going on? They're referencing all of these things. And some books do a good job of like, hey, remember this person killed this person and this is why this is happening. 
there was that a little bit, but then sometimes I was like, what did that person do? Like, I don't remember yeah. much of anything. Yeah, I think yeah. with the character development as well, because you didn't feel that way, is that from this book, I felt like with the first book, we got so much of the character's personalities. In the second book, I thought we did a good job at like keeping that up. But when it came to the third book, I was like, I'm kind of reading not I, I just didn't feel like they were almost like the same characters the first book in a way because it was just I felt like they were led by the plot rather than the other way around I thought like the the decisions that were made by the characters in the first book were like very what's the word like it, it affected the plot so that the plot would have moved them forward rather than this one I thought it just it was just a series of really silly things happening that you know like for instance there was a moment where Finley got a clue it was like it just happened right in front of her you know what i mean it's like these things are just like happening to them and it's not the other way around whereas mm -hmm. it just didn't feel as clever and is is fun as mm -hmm. the other ones i think we're like 10, 12 minutes in now so we can get into spoilers so anybody who hasn't read anything in the series like hop out um if we wanted to actually and didn't think about this we should probably do a quick recap oh my god let me do this on the spot okay finley donovan is killing it she is an author she gets hired, um, she gets an offer to kill somebody. She's pondering if she wants to kill that person. And then before she can decide if she actually wants to kill them, she accidentally kills them. That's the plot of the first one. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole thing is like, there's a bigger conspiracy than just her. So there's a lot more, more moving pieces. Um, and then the cliffhanger is that someone is now contracting her or trying to contract somebody to kill her ex-husband, who we all want to die, right? <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll talk about that more in another section um but in this one oh god what happens in this one um it's like this online forum where someone is hiring people to kill other people and it's all like this mob boss situation i remember she steals a car there's a gunfight there's a lot of wildness my favorite thing about this is when we find out that her mom is actually the one who was in the forum yes. um trying to get somebody to kill steven but she mm -hmm. didn't mean to it was like an accident which is just so funny and I feel like that, when we ask the question of like what worked in the first book or the second book that didn't work in here, like what magic was missing or what magic was there, um, the magic that was missing for me was that like, oh my God, no way, that's so funny moment. Like nothing really happened for me in this one that I was like, what? It was just yeah. kind of vaguely interesting. Uh, in this one, they go to a police academy to, you know, try to figure out if they're, if a cop is the one who is the contract killer because there's other people blackmailing the mob bosses and being hired to kill people. And um, so they infiltrate this police academy to like find out who it was. Um, but it's under the guise of like Finley doing research for her book. See, there Those was no passion there. Like when you were describing that third book, there was no <laughs> was passion. Like, Whatever, <laughs> this is about. <laughs> it's like, it, it, it highlights the problem with this book is that I feel like it's just gone so beyond the initial premise of the first book. I love the first book and the premise of the first book because of the whole like yeah she was accidentally hired to be a hit woman kind of yeah. thing and this one is just like it's it's not the same book it's not the which i know like with a sequel you have to sort of change and develop and things like that but it, it that's the problem with sequels sometimes is like it misses the mark because it does something too different like the whole police academy thing like that went on far too long it's like it was trying to tell well it did have a point because obviously she was trying to find out the the contract killer but i feel like it was an overly long, like almost like a punchline to the big joke of this book was that this is where the whole thing's set. Well, most of it's set. And I just feel like it could have been condensed into two chapters. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I just, it went too long for me. And that, I just, I was just bored of the setting. Yeah. I think um, one thing I would say is, I feel like some of the things that I enjoyed about the first two more is that you cared more about the why. And in the third book, it was only about the who. It was, it was just like, here's this huge cast of characters. There's literally 30 people. I wrote down every single name as they were coming up. because I was like, I need to remember all these people. I need to pick my culprit. I need to like predict things. Because that's the most fun thing about a whodunit is who did it. Um, I know the chat is talking about how they could guess. Um, they found it really easy to guess who the person was. I want to hear that from each of you if you could guess what was happening. But I don't, there wasn't enough of like why this person was killing, like why Stephen needed to die, like why somebody was willing to do that. It was just about the who and that's where it lost me. Mm -hmm. 
were you able to predict? Because we did get to find out like who the contract killer was. Um, I didn't, but to be honest, it's because I didn't really care enough to think that hard about it. <laughs> okay. I was just like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm basically the same way. Like, I was more so focused on finishing the book because mm-hmm. I, like, Gabby has said, like, if I put that book down, I was not going to pick it back up. So I'm like, I'm just going to lay here and listen to this audiobook. And mm-hmm. I wasn't really, like, trying to guess anything, which is a shocker because I try to guess the killer and, like, literally everything. It's funny that I am sitting here telling you that I knew who it was, like, from the beginning, but I don't remember now who it was. <laughs> but I know in the moment, I was like, duh. Like, that's so easy. So it was, um, oh, my God, what was his name? Stu? Stu. He was, like, the therapist at the police thing. I don't know. It's funny, because once we got to the reveal, I was like, did we see him in enough scenes that I could really predict him. I, I think at every point I was kind of like, oh, it's this person, it's this person, but I also didn't really care. Well, there so wasn't that many suspects, in my opinion, because I was like, it's going to be a man, obviously. <laughs> I was worried they were going to make it the one female cop, and I was like, I hope they don't do that, because mm-hmm. like Georgia and her are going to be involved. But like part of me was like, maybe it'll be her. But I feel like um, the thing about A Cozy Mystery, if this is the only, I know this isn't a technically a cozy mystery, but this is the only cozy mystery series you've read. The reason that it's easy to guess sometimes who done it is because it's never going to be the main character. It's never going to be the best friend. It's never going to be the love interest. It's never going to be the sister. It's never going to be the sister's love interest. It just doesn't happen like that. It's always somebody who seems sketchy from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And like, there's like four love interests. That's like half the characters. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. True. No, I didn't, but I, I learned from like, say, Prey Elias, as soon as they think someone's a culprit, I don't, I instantly, Mark them off, like, oh, they think it's them, it's not them. I'm kind of, like, I take that route. Because they're, they're never going to mention who the culprit is too early, because if they put that in our head. But I I didn't know it was true, because, like, Gabby, I just, I, at that point, I didn't really care. At that point, I was just mm-hmm. like, I just want to see more people, well, this is awful, but, like, I just want to see more, like, death and stuff. Like, for a murder mystery sort of thing, I just felt like it was lacking in that front as well. Yeah. I feel like it was more focused on Finlay's it, like the whole book was just her being insecure, mm. yeah. which I mean, fair, but again, do I have to say it? Like, she's so bland. Like, she's so bland. <laughs> There's nothing interesting. You know what? Why is it that every man, eligible bachelor in this town, <laughs> loves Finlay and not a single person hits on Barrow except the only other BIPOC character that she has a history with? Oh, Nobody thinks God. that Barrow is hot. At least she's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying Finlay's not funny? No. I mean, a- as we transition into like the character discussion, I do want to hear who we hate and who we love because I know Katie has some thoughts. <laughs> I mean, we all hate Steven, but if anyone wants to just go off. <laughs> somebody <laughs> earlier somebody earlier was like, Steven died? Did I miss that? I was like, no, but thank you for your wishful thinking. Like, put that out there. I know, I was going to say, Katie? Like, no. Like, literally, I have to, I have to say that. I was ranting. I called my best friend and I was like, if your ex said this to you, what would you do? Um, <laughs> when he went to Finlay and said that they should get marriage counseling. I know. I was like, like to fix what you burned to the ground. Are you, you're not married. Like I, <laughs> I can't. I, the audacity. I literally, he kept saying things that would contradict what he did. I'm sure he did this in the second one as well. He was, what well, like almost kind of slut shame and Finley a little bit in the second book, I think it was. I, mm-hmm. I'm starting to blend the second and the third book together now. But he was saying things that literally she would say, Oh, but you can do this. And then he would instantly shut her down. And like just the that's like the sign of a, a sociopath. That's a psychopath. Steven, yeah, he was delusional. He was I could feel Katie's rage actually. I could the day that she filmed <laughs> that rant. I mean I can't wait to watch. Oh, <laughs> Wait, no, you mean when you when you filmed yours or when you watched I, when I watched your Katie's, I, I watched your run about it and I was like, oh my god. And this was before <laughs> I read it too. I was like, how can he get worse? How can he get worse? Well, and it's also it makes me this is what ruined the second and third book for me, is that Finlay, I do not like her as a character because El Casameno makes her victimize Steven and feel bad for him and 
relate to him and be like, oh, well, he's the father of my children. I'm like, yeah, that was your mistake. Like you made that a long time ago. But also it makes me not like her that much because I don't like the way she's depicted as a parent in the books because mm -hmm. you never see her being a parent. You never see her loving her children. You only see them being foils to her plot and her being annoyed at them and shoving them onto her sister or her mom or to Steven. Never caring, just being annoyed at them and them being annoying. Like there's never a moment where they're cute or loving or sweet. It's just grubby hands crawling under bathroom doors. Like that's it. Yeah, yeah I can't think they existed. As someone you know, who doesn't like, I don't love a lot of kid, I don't love a lot of kid focused books anyway. So like, I don't want the kids in it more. But I want Finley being a good mom more because when we're talking about Finley not really having much of a personality, um, not being like, why is everybody so into her? The only thing I can come up with is like, well, she's a good mom. Like they want to, but she's not. Like it's not that she's not a good mom. It's that she doesn't really, I don't think the author is really showing us that. So I'm sure she is. But like all we hear is like, oh, some, come take the kids. Come take the kids. Like I want to protect them. I want to save their father. But like. There's not really any moments where you're like, oh, yeah, Finley's a fantastic mother. She's doing this all for them. It seems like she's just kind of having fun and being stupid. Yeah. And so even then as well, like, because I feel like a lot of her, like, say, three quarters of her attention is on, I guess, the well, maybe half the attention is on the love interest. Another quarter of it is, like, her not doing her writer's job and just having the same conversation with her agent every single book, which is another thing where I was getting, like, so fed up with. Like, the whole metaphor thing of her life, like, Oh, I can't put the cop and the main character together because of this, that, and the other. And she was like her own, I don't want to say the word out loud because this isn't my channel, but like say blocker. And like, but even then, she I don't I like Katie said, I don't understand her appeal because even when she's doing like the dirty talk and stuff, it sounds like just stripped straight from a porno. She's just <laughs> so bad at like talking dirty. She was like, I think she saw Nick's thing about Bobby and she was like, oh, that's a lot of research material. It made me cringe. <laughs> it made me cringe. And I don't usually cringe at stuff like this. I have I, I have steel, you know, when it comes to <laughs> cringy stuff. I'm the king of cringe. But that was like, oh, my God, I don't, I don't feel like any of the sauciness between her and any love interest is worth it. Well, what's funny is that's true, everything about Finlay, but that's because Finley is unsalted, Okay. <laughs> But, <laughs> but it but El Casamento is capable of doing something because I personally, the one thing I really, really liked about the third book was Vero and Javi's relationship. I personally thought that was hot. I was like, <laughs> I loved that. Personal. Mm -hmm. I want to hear, um, Gabby and Mayana, do you have a preferred love interest? Um, yes, and I'm pissed because <laughs> I like her with Julian. Like Julian was fun, and like he distracted her from her life. And like Nick, I just I don't know. I don't like Nick. I can't get on board. So I like know. Nick, but it's also just because it's like, well, I don't know who else. I guess yeah, <laughs> Julian. That's who else. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't really take him very seriously. So like in my mind, he was just like. I don't think she took him very seriously. So I like I didn't take him very seriously either. Right. Whereas like she takes Nick like very, very seriously. So I don't know. Well, I feel like him being a cop is not the hottest <laughs> thing in the world. But it's also like, oh, you take him seriously because he's a cop and you don't take Julian seriously because he's a bartender, even though he's a lawyer. Like, yeah, he's and just because he's younger, like, so what? <laughs> What I what I think is I I don't actually know that I have a preference for who Finley ends up with. Um, like I want the romance to be a part of the book, but I don't really care about that anymore at this point. But I do think that the author did an intentional thing in this third book with giving us a reason to like Nick. Like they did have romantic scenes. He was really kind and thoughtful towards her. So at least she is. If she's pushing that relationship, she's at least letting us you know, focus on it and giving Nick some good qualities because everyone was so die hard for Julian in the past books. Mm. Um, I don't know that I really care because I don't really remember her dynamic with Julian at this point. Like I should have reread probably the second book. Um, I might go back now weirdly, or I pro I'll probably reread all of them before the fourth book actually. But I'm, I am wondering if, at this point, if she's planning on writing like a 10 book series, 
is it going to be Nick like from here on out or are they going to break up? Is there going to be drama now? Like, is there going to be another love interest down the line? Like, how is this all going to work out? Cause if they're already kind of together. Oh, I can already tell you. Oh my God. I just thought about this. I was like, they're definitely going to have a moment where Finlay like goes to court or something or goes on trial and Julian has to be her lawyer. Mm. Oh my God. They're going to keep bringing both of them back. Okay. And also she ghosted Julian. Like she ghosted him in the last book, which I, and, and he kept trying to be like, Hey, like, do you want to hang out? Like, Hey, like, what's up? And she just wouldn't respond. And then I think he came to her house or something. And she was like, well, you're just like really young for me. Like, I don't know. I'm just like not good enough for you. Yeah. I think like when I was reading like the second book, like I, I get so like caught up in the main character that I kind of like think the way that they think. So I never really thought of Julian as important or like, because she thought like, she basically thought of him as immature. So like, because he was a bartender. So then that's kind of how I saw him. And I wasn't really thinking of like him from like, I guess other people's perspective versus like hers. So, like now I'm like, okay, like he does sound like, I guess, okay. But <laughs> I'm looking at it from like her perspective and like what she's shown us. I'm like, if she's looking at him thinking because he's a bartender, he's not serious. I'm like, Finlay, you're a failed hit woman. Like, <laughs> Exactly. Well, I, I wanted I wanted to know if maybe I was just being too critical, but Vero, I liked her more in the third book. I didn't like her as much in the second book, but the whole, like, I don't understand. Like, maybe I'm missing it, but the backstory of her, be, supposedly they thought that these, like, girls thought that she stole their money, but she didn't. I was like, why is this so serious? Like, why are, are you, like, running for your life against these sorority girls? Like, I just... She's got a warrant, hasn't she? She's got, like, a warrant out for her, yeah. right? Wow. I too am confused why and how that all happened. Yeah. Um, I, I just going back to Vero though, I do actually I don't I didn't like her in the third book. Um, loved her in the first one, liked her in the second one. This one she's getting on my nerves, but I don't know if it's her, it's more El Casamano. I don't think her humor is landing for me anymore. Yeah. Um Vero's little like quirky quips are just like I'm finding very cheesy. Um so Vero's getting on my nerves. But um Okay, I want to ask a, I want to ask your favorite scene, but then I do want to talk about what we think the series will go forward, and I want to remember to bring it back to Vero because I really think she's going to be the main focus of the fourth book. Mm-hmm. But do you have a favorite scene or moment from this one? Um, Anything to be honest, I don't think I have any like scenes that stand out to me. I mean, at least I was having more fun during the scenes when Finlay and Vero were both up to something. Um, mm-hmm. Because I didn't really care for the romance that was happening in this one as much, but I don't really have any like standout scenes for me. I liked the scene at the end, and it's probably because I was paying the most attention towards the end because it was the mm-hmm. end. But I liked the scene at the end where Vero like handcuffed herself to the like she was like basically like freaking out and she handcuffed herself to like the toilets in the bathroom when she like <laughs> dropped her phone and like Finley had to go and deal with like the situation by herself because Vero was stuck in the bathroom. I thought that was very hilarious. I, it's so funny because I literally wrote that down as my least favorite scene. Because <laughs> I was just thinking, like, as I was reading that, I was like, why is she, ha- how did she end up handcuffed in the bathroom? And I feel like it was a really intentional thing by the author because because I believe the fourth book is going to be so Vero-centric. I think she was like, how do I just get Vero not in this scene? Like, how do I leave her somewhere so Finley can do something on her own for like 20 pages? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah I was just confused. sorry go on <laughs> that's funny because I also think that there are so many moments where I'll hear other people say that they loved them and I'm like oh I hated that or there's like a moment that I liked like somebody else hated but I I liked when Vero like <laughs> seduced that cop into giving her his outfit and his underwear and she was like well I did it like yeah. all he wanted was a picture like it's not a big deal and I was like oh my god yes Vero mm-hmm. also I, I had this whole thing in my head the scene didn't actually happen but in my head Miss <laughs> Haggerty one made no fucking made no sense why she was there but I want so bad she's the nosy neighbor I want her to be utilized. I want something to happen. And for Finlay to be like, oh my God, you know who would have seen this? And go and like, and then Miss Haggerty's like, is like, oh, you mean last night at 11.50 p.m.? <laughs> it's like so-and-so. Because I also assume she has a book just full of like the tea. So mm-hmm. 
Oh, that would be amazing. So you guys all have like comedic ones, I guess, but like mine is more, I think it was when they were doing an exercise in the academy thing and there was the mannequin and it was all like dismembered and stuff and it had like the guy's name on from oh, yeah. earlier. I was like, oh, this is actually a kind of suspenseful because now they have like something that they have to do, like they have a goal and now they're like, oh, we need to contact I forgot her name, but like he was supposed to be buried and supposed to have died from cancer and stuff. And then they overhear the police talking like, oh, we need to go and like exhume the body and stuff like that. So like that was like, I, I kind of like that because I thought, oh, yay, finally, we have some stakes. And then it didn't really go anywhere after that. But like, I really enjoyed that scene with the mannequin. Like I thought that was quite sinister. So I like that one. That's such a good point. Like it is a mystery book and yeah. my favorite parts are all just like the fun, goofy, silly stuff. So like, I should just be reading a romance. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't need the mystery anymore. I think my favorite scene was actually not the very beginning scene because I was, compl I was so caught off guard when like her kid was in a stall with a man and she was like trying to get, that made me feel so weird. And I didn't understand why it kicked off that way. <laughs> but um, my, the, my favorite scene right is right after that where, or is it, yeah, where um, she's like on the phone with her agent and like the taxi driver is talking about um, how he thinks the book should be written and he's like contributing. It's just like this tiny little scene, but it was so funny. I like laughed out loud. That was the only point I, point I laughed out loud in the entire book. I also really like the scene where um, now I can't even remember who it was that got shot. Was it Joey? Um, where he was like wearing a bulletproof vest. And so we thought that maybe he died. But then she realizes that he was saying no aim lower or whatever. And I was like, that's smart. I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that scene that you're talking about, that was something that I heard somebody say that like they thought it was hilarious, like the her son in the bathroom. And I was like, no, that was giving very pedophilic like vibes to me, especially when that guy's shown later and he's in like teacher. <laughs> and and then like he freaks out. And I was like, why are you acting like you're gonna get arrested? Because yeah. Yeah, it made me feel it made me feel weird for sure. Like it was it was definitely like comedic and silly and whatever and didn't go too far. But I was tense in that scene that like, what conversations are we about to have? Like, I felt really weird about it. Does El Casamano have kids? I mean, not that I have kids, but it's like the way that she writes children makes me feel like she doesn't like that. That's why she doesn't have them in anymore. That's why she keeps putting them to the side. She's like, I'll write them, so I'm gonna put them aside. Going back on what like Kayla said about that Joey scene and stuff, one of the things that I didn't really, well, one of the things I don't understand with the series as well is like Felix, like in the whole Russian mob thing and like, why he thinks Finley's an asset. Like, why was he the one who said to Finley, I'll go make sure he's dead? He should have just made sure that he was actually dead. Like, this happens so many times mm -hmm. in, like, media. Like, I've seen it happen in, happen in books, movies, where a character says, oh, yeah, they're dead when they're actually not to cover up the actual death. It's like, the villains, the dumb for not doing it themselves. Like, and why, like, what get rid of Finley. Like, she has so much information about, like, everything. Just get rid of her. Like, honestly, I don't think it would affect him whatsoever. But, like, that whole part there, I was, like, I mean, I like the part with the Joey stuff. And, like, yeah, I think it was Cam who was pointing the gun and stuff. I like that part. But then it's just, like, after that, Felix. And, like, what? Like, it, it didn't make sense to me. So I was, like, eh. I thought the same thing. I was, like, this is kind of giving, like, Disney villain, I'm going to tell you my plan before I kill you. Like, yeah. That's the I part of it. Like that's weird. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Like, if you're a big, bad Russian mob boss, oh, yeah. and then we as the reader get to see you, like, making stupid decisions, like, you've lost all of your yeah. villain qualities. Yeah. I will well, say, though, that, like, that's not, like, the point of the book is to be silly and campy and stupid. So, like, I think because so many of us read so, like, intense thrillers sometimes, <laughs> we're like, it is supposed to be stupid. Like, let's remember that. <laughs> yeah. It, she, yeah, she does need to be around. It is, unfortunately finley donovan something 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 so like she has to live she has to be the main character but like can we just can the fourth book be called something else what if like <laughs> finley gets killed off in one book and like girl has to like somehow take her identity i was thinking that oh my god <laughs> that would be so, so fun but you know something about Ver something that vero did where i was like is this was comedy because i would have been furious is when finley takes a shower and Vero calls her agent and is like, so this is what's going to happen in the book. And like basically signs a contract saying that's what's going to happen. I was like, okay, you write the book then. What? Oh, I would have been so bad. Like, I don't care if the book's bad. It's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vero's been very involved in the, the writing process. <laughs> Interestingly. 
Um, what do you, okay, will you continue in the series, first of all? Because I know some people like this was their moment to call it, that they're done. Um, but I know some of you in the chat, like, I want you to feel represented if you like absolutely love this one. So will you be continuing? What do you hope and expect to come in the fourth book? Um, I think I will be continuing as long as the fourth one is the last one. Um, <laughs> because if the fourth one's the last one, then I'll want to see like how it concludes. But I think if she announces like the fourth one is just the next one in the series, then like, I don't know if I'll continue it. Um, and then I don't know what I hope to expect to happen. I don't know. I feel like for me, the more that Finlay is getting involved with like the Russian mob or whatever, the less interested I get. I feel like it was really fun in the beginning and now it's just getting kind of like repetitive and tedious. <laughs> But um, I don't I don't really know what I'm, I I mean, I guess, like you were saying, um, Vero being more of a focus would be interesting because it would be something a little bit different. And so I think that would be pretty cool. But otherwise, I don't really know where I'm hoping it'll go. Yeah, I, I think for now, I think I'll continue. But when we get to that point, but also the books come out at such a good point in the year where like nothing else I'm anticipating comes out. So I'll just probably read it just because it's there. Yeah. And I think I hope we get back to the fun to like the first book like the high inks like i don't know like just all the stuff that happened and the, like what made me love the series i would love to get back to yeah. that and like less like i need to do this for my book and more just like how do we get out of this situation yeah i agree i am not going to continue in the series because there's no for me there's no hope like there just isn't because i don't care about the characters anymore i think she has written them so far in a direction that there's no coming back from the opinions they have and the decisions they've made. And she's not going to kill anyone. It's not going to happen. She is not going to kill anyone. And it's not like that would fix anything. Her killing Steven wouldn't fix anything. <laughs> Finlay's the problem. And she's the main character. It's like, she's not going to change. And like, there's not going to be any grand reveal of her finally realizing how much Steven sucks. Because that's not the point. The point is for them to have a redemption arc. And I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. And also Vero, there's just not going to be enough of her to make me satisfied with having to hear about Finlay's story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair. I'm on the same thing with like, is Gabby? Like if there's definitely going to be one more, yes, I'll read it. If there's going to be more than that, I probably would DNF for now and just maybe like put it low on my priority list for series and then maybe wait until the whole series finishes and then like, maybe do a whole vlog reading all of them, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like, just, I, I, I feel like I, I don't hope that Finley Donovan is like a one hit wonder, but that's kind of what it's starting to feel like. It's a bit like if you're watching a sitcom for like 10 years, and yes, you still love the characters all the way through, but you've heard their jokes a thousand times before. And I feel like we're leaning a little bit too heavily on the jokes in this one. It got maybe a little bit too slapstick for my liking. I want more of that balance back. I want more of the mystery. And if we have way more mystery elements to it, I it, it, I probably would end up giving them more of a chance and then continuing. But maybe it's the next one. If there is definitely, gonna, I don't know, I keep changing my mind. It's like, I don't want to say goodbye to it yet because I only discovered Finley Donovan like three months ago or something. <laughs> but still new to me. I'm like, I don't want to write it off just yet. But yeah, I, I, I'm hopeful. I'm the opposite of Katie. I'm not like, and Katie's like desolate. Like, I've got no hope. But no, I, I, I have hope. <laughs> I agree. I think I think that the author could turn things around, but also yeah. I do I really enjoy the characters so mm -hmm. except for Finley. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel committed just because like I am having a fine time still. Um and it's such like a part of my channel now and I've done like you know other videos where I've like designed covers and predicted things and predicted titles. And so like I wanna I wanna finish out the four. I think even if it continues, it might be kind of like the Pretty Little Liars situation where it like has an arc every however many books. Yeah. So like maybe the, the feeling will end after four and then it'll kind of become something else and we feel like everything has wrapped up. So I do want that conclusion in the fourth book. And also I want to see Vero and Javi um, because at the very end of the book, there's always a cliffhanger and that's what pulls you into the next one. Um, and in this one, Javi gets kidnapped at the end. And now Vero is on this mission to go like save him. And it's funny because after I did my cover prediction video, I talked about that I thought the fourth book or the third book was going to be a road trip story. And literally that day, El Casamano DM'd me and she was like, the fourth book is literally a road trip story. And I can't believe you predicted that. And it's so crazy. Um, so I, I'm not that I love a road trip story anyway, but I am excited to see the cover 
mm-hmm. if it's like her behind a steering wheel, like I thought. Yeah. I see what it's called. Finley Donovan hits the road. I want to see oh. like what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to read it and then I'll decide if I want to continue from there. But I'm just so interested in the Javi storyline because there was also this talk of, you know, we don't know why Javi ghosted Vero way back in the day. We don't know why their relationship ended. And I want to know. And I feel like we're going to get that. I feel like we're going to learn more about what happened to the sorority situation, why Javi left her. I think he's going to become more of a main character um, because I don't really care about Finley's like romantic relationship. I'm hoping we'll focus kind of on the other situation. Oh, I, I will say the one caveat of like, this would draw me back in. And that's not going to happen, but I mean, maybe it's a little bit possible. Is if at some point Finlay does kill someone and it like, that would be crazy. But like, if she does kill somebody like on purpose, and even if it's a bad guy, if it's whatever, if she does it on purpose and that, I feel like El Casameno could like, make that a turning point for her character and like kind of change her a little bit. And I do care about the Javi and Vero storyline, though I don't think Finlay cares as much as you should about your best friend's yes. past relationship. I agree. I feel like, I don't know how to say it, but I feel like Finlay's one of those friends where it's like everything's about her and all the focus is on me. And then once like another character, like you have to like focus on them. She's kind of just like, oh, whatever, I'm going to help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like um, there was like video footage. They were looking. It was weird because they were looking at the video footage and they thought that Javi had stolen that Aston Martin or however you pronounce that. Um, but then they looked at the video footage and he had gotten like put in the trunk of a car and then driven away. Um, but then Vero deleted all of that footage, which I found very strange. I was like, obviously like she wants to take the reins and like figure out what happened, but they're also seeing like, why would you not ha- keep any evidence of your, of him being kidnapped? Like that was very confusing to me. I thought when I read it, which this is, I'm sure not what's actually going to happen, but what I thought was that, he maybe was wanted by somebody or that maybe he didn't have documentation or like something like that, where she was like, Oh, I don't want this going to the police or whatever. But I also feel like I'm gonna like if, well, I'm not going to read it, but one of y'all will tell me uh, (laughs) what happens with the hobby, what their backstory is, because you can tell based on the way his character acts that he didn't do anything that's going to make us hate him. I feel like Mm -hmm. it's going to be understandable, whatever the backstory is between them. Mm-hmm. Katie is so bent on not reading this book that I actually think that she will. Like, I, <laughs> I will actually be shocked if she doesn't because she's <laughs> going to tell us. It'll be like a hate read. She yeah. looks like you can secretly request an arc from the <laughs> <She'll be laughs> author. Like, everybody else. Here's the thing like, I am absolutely going to read it. So, like, if anybody's on the fence, like, I'll make sure I put out my review literally the week it comes out. So, I can tell you, like, is it satisfying? Is it, you know, is there a conclusion? Does anything fun happen? You know, I'll let you know. Well, how could it end? Like, how could it be, like, concluded? You know what I mean? Because there's so many loose ends that aren't even really loose ends. Like, we'd have to, we'd have to figure out her book. We'd have to figure out the mob. We'd have to figure out Steven and Julian and Vero and Javi and all of these things. I'm like, there's no way. It'll be 500 pages. <laughs> I think a lot of people would have to die for it to fully conclude. Exactly. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of The Walking Dead, so I'm off of <laughs> I'm just like, everyone can die. <laughs> My last question before we leave is, do you have any other recommendations for people who love the series and they want something else to get into or didn't like the series and you think there's something better? Do you have any movie recommendations or book recommendations? Um, I don't read like a ton of like cozy mystery kind of books if that's what this is considered but um, I thought of Dial A for Aunties. Mm -hmm. That's one that kind of has like a similar kind of fun thing and it also has romance. Yeah that one. That's one I would definitely recommend for fans of Finlay and I think it was it has a lot more um, like family elements in that story too that I think are stronger in that book than in this book but Mm -hmm. but yeah I like Dial A for Aunties. Okay. um, I guess it beats the purpose because it's not like cozy but like veronica mars is like a good okay. like, tv show like this kind of like kind of similar but it's like a lot darker mm. i forgot to grab it but i would say a more like 
adults or like they act more mature would be the Veronica Speedwell series. I And I think that that romance like is actually good. But the one that I would say is the most comparable would be the Thursday Murder Club series because they have a similar tone of audiobook and the characters are really funny and it's a mystery and it's absurd, but it like makes sense how they could get into these situations. But I think in a comedic mystery way, you would really like these if you like the first Finley Donovan book. Um. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't really have like any good recommendations really i i'm also like still quite new to the the whole genre itself i guess katie would you say like manga buys would you say like spy family maybe or just like the kind of mystery element or like trying to keep something hidden and all of the co comedy that comes from trying to keep secrets from one another maybe yeah yeah but it's not like, it's just like, it's their job in Spy yeah. Family. We're like in these books, it's like random people that are finding That's themselves crazy. in these situations. But I would recommend Spy Family to any. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I really love this recommendation because if you want like a good um, romance, well, I don't know if you call it a romance. Um, good Girls just has a very fantastic love interest that I, I wish I could find in a book. Because it's awful and it's great at the same time. <laughs> um, my book recommendation, I agree, Dialy for Aunties, just because it's goofy and silly and ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not about like intentionally killing anyone. It's like just all an accident and then just get, goes off the rails from there. One that is more intentional is Magic Lies and Deadly Pies. Um, this is like another cozy mystery, but it feels more like silly and fun and murdery because there's this woman who bakes pies to kill evil men. Um, mm -hmm. The pies are a little bit magic. So like she can't ever be blamed for the murder because it's the pie's fault, it's not her. Um, <laughs> and she has a lot of like morality conversations in it too about like, should I be killing people? Is this like the right thing to do? Uh, and this, I'm gonna read the sequel this week. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and of course, as always, the chat is full of recommendations. So. Stephanie Plum, I've heard that's really good. It's like kind of like one of the classic cozy mysteries. Um, I'm gonna have to come back and look through all of these, but that wraps it up. I didn't bring my March book club pick with me to hold up for you, but we are currently reading The Spite House by Johnny Compton, a very different vibe from Finley Donovan. Um, it is about a man who goes and stays in a haunted house with his daughters and he has to record all the paranormal activity. Um, while he's finding out like his family history the live show is going to be at the beginning of the April so I would love to see all of you read that it's a black author would love to see you support it um, I think it's a debut too actually and that's it thank you everybody for being here and participating in the chat uh, I'm so glad all of you came I know that it's hard to make time for things like not involved in your own channel especially when you're you know 30 hours deep editing a <laughs> ridiculous video <laughs> this, this, this was like a really smooth like for all of us to get right at the same time like this was like so smooth to organize like I was not gonna sacrifice that for anything <laughs> you know what's funny too is that I thought I was like oh it has to be before like 2 p.m because that's when I leave for work and I didn't remember until yesterday that I asked off for today because I didn't know Probably when like we two months it. ago right yeah. <laughs> I was like why am I not scheduled <laughs> I have <laughs> nothing but time but my sleeping schedule I have insomnia so my sleeping schedule is crazy so I'm literally I set an alarm I'm like because I would like not wake up to like 5 p.m so I like I'm like going to bed and I'm like I have to go to bed early like I have to be prepared because I will sleep for like 12 hours sometimes <laughs> I'm so jealous <laughs> You're all so thoughtful for popping in here with me. I appreciate it so much. I think this is one of the biggest live shows I've ever had, and we still managed to get it in and done under 50 minutes. So incredible. <laughs> Thank you all so very much, and we will see you soon. Make sure to check out everybody's links down below, please, and support everybody.